these things. However, does it make sense to have one, two, I'm thinking of legacy airlines here. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, eight. I think there are eight or nine, I'm not sure at this point, in the Gulf. Yes. Nine legacy airlines. And legacy airline is a fully fledged airline carrying the name and the banner of the country. What for? What's the purpose? I, I've actually heard someone say that it's to bring business into the country. That might be the case, but there are other ways, more efficient ways of doing it. Now, if you are running an efficient airline, by all means, do it. But if you are running an inefficient airline and it has been losing money year on year, decade on decade, for the love of God, why keep it other than ego? It makes no sense. Now, weapons of mass destruction, the new slavery, debt. Oh, God, yes. What are your thoughts on that? Because, Ooh, I, I mean, that's our new slavery, isn't it? Um, I'm, uh, see, as the, uh, <laughs> as the main sponsor of this organization happens to be a bank, it's kind of hard for me to talk <laughs> about such things. But, you know, eh, if you're going to talk about the reality is, the reality is we are, slavery has just shifted. The view has just shifted. That's all it is. You don't, you're no longer what you call it, uh, in physical bonds, you're in financial bonds, you're in metaphorical bonds. How many of you literally, are, how many of you are going to say, you know what, I'm going to put my feet up and I'm not going to go work? How many of you can say that? Is not slavery? How many of you are going to go out of your way to work really hard to get some extra special to be able to ensure that your child goes to a better school? Somewhat of a slavery? You're, you're a slave to ensuring that happens? How many of you will go out and get the latest credit cards, as lovely as they are from ENBD? But how many of you are going to go out and get the latest credit card? Isn't that slavery? How many of you are going to take out a loan that you really don't need? And a mortgage that you, you really can't afford. But you want. Yeah. Now, again, I'm not saying this against a particular organization. It's the way we've set up our society as a whole. There are facilitators within that. Do I hold a facilitator at fault? I don't think so. I, as a, if I'm a drug user, I shouldn't hold the drug supplier at fault. He or she is only supplying me that because I want it. It's my fault. We have lost this personal responsibility ethos. We want to drop it on others. You know what? If we got our act together and we talked to the different organizations and we told them, stop doing this to us, stop manhandling us this way, they won't manhandle us. It's not their fault that because you don't know what you want, they're taking what you call, they're, they're providing you with what you want. Do I hold them accountable? I don't think so. So you're suggesting legalizing drugs then? <laughs> uh, Here's a question. Do you drink uh, coffee? Coffee is a drug. Well, it does, caffeine yeah. is a drug. Yes, you eat true. anything with sugar? That's a drug. Well, last I checked, would you Alcohol call it? is a drug. Well, yes, God, yes. yes. Yep. So if you are going to say, what category? You know what? I, I've actually um, looked into this thing. The difference between a legal <laughs> drug and an illegal drug is taxation. So <laughs> okay. if I tax something, it's legal. If I don't tax it, it's illegal. Simple as that. But um, whether I'm advocating it or not, I don't... I'm, the only, uh, here's where I'm going to sound something really soppy. The only drug I advocate is love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Um, and while people like to think love is free, um, for those people who have mistresses, I'll tell you, I can assure you it's not free. <laughs> Let's talk philanthropy. We, we spoke about charity. You have uh, some interesting views. Uh, I read you said greed is good when it comes yes. to charity. So w w what does that mean, greed is good? Um, If I give you charity, I pity you. Emotionally, that's an issue. I'm telling you you're not good enough. That's another issue. I'm saying I need to, I need to take care of you. I will act as Baba, right. right? Versus if I give you the facilities and say, use your internal greed, which we all have. Use that internal drive. 
pick up those facilities and do something with your life. You don't owe me anything after that. You will feel good because you've done something successful with your life. So I want you to have that greed. I, you need to have that little driver that I, I want. I want more. But again, not I want more in a malicious way. I, I, mean, I want yeah. more yeah. while others suffer. Yeah. No, I, I'm not advocating that. I'll never advocate that. But I want people to want to have that internal um, that, that heat, that drive, that, that ambition, that feel. Get up. Do something. Make yourself that much more special. Not to others. That's a secondary thing. Do it for yourself. When you wake up and you look in the mirror and someone's <laughs> given you charity, how well do you feel about yourself? Sure. Versus the person who has done, got up and done something for themselves. So, so it's more about empowerment and enablement uh, as opposed to just handing over? Yes. Is, is, is that where we're going with that? Yes. Okay. Um, another, you know, we're touching all of these difficult areas, so I thought, you know, let's just throw them all in. Um, okay. Islamic finance. I know we've had this discussion at length. Uh, is it religion, S semantics? Is it just about ethics? Where are we on this one? Don't go there. <laughs> it's probably all three. The problem. I have with Islamic finance the way it is today. Yeah. Not it as a concept, but the way it's done today. It's beautiful marketing. And it aims to hit at the heartstrings. If that's the case... It's wrong. Thank yeah. you. If, on the other hand, the purpose is to actually help in Islamic concepts, then that's a different thing altogether. But, but I don't see that as of yet. Sure. I could be wrong. But that's where I'm going with this, because what I, I mean, even the Pope uh, well, he's, has, he's, he's has been known to uh, uh, basically said that if the Western world had used the basic ethical principles of Islam, um, then arguably the current crisis would not have happened. Let, let me so by definition, what we were talking about slavery, modern slavery, what is, what is it? Mortgages, packaging products and so on. So if Islamic finance can underline that and say asset-backed, do it ethically, then we remove all of that. Uh, in Islamic finance, most people just think about it in terms of banks. And that's, not, that's wrong. That's true. Yeah. There are ways uh, Islamic finance touches upon that are not talked about, not touched upon. For example, one of the things you have to declare if you're going to trade in, Islamic, in an Islamic way is whether you're going to make a profit, break even, or your loss. Now, you don't have to say how much, but you have to declare. Also, if you're going to buy or sell, sorry, if you're going to sell something, you must declare if there is a fault in the thing you're selling. How many people have had a car with a little nick here or there and have never told the person who's buying there's something that, if I applied Islamic finance or Islamic um, commerce, Sure. rules and regulations and commerce. On that, that could never take place. Um, <coughs> in the issue, and this is a big one, yeah. how many people have seen something they wanted to get, the, the seller agrees and the buyer agrees, and somebody comes in with a higher price, and the seller immediately turns around and gives it to the house. This is unacceptable in Islam, mm -hmm. because there's been a contract that's been committed. Again, these aspects are not talked about. But if you're going to talk about those, we, want, we like to categorize things into small little things and say, you know, it's nice and we package it and here you go, that's it. It's not that. The thing is, you need people from the um, uh, scholars yeah. to talk about other aspects of it. And you need people within the business world to understand different aspects. Because if you don't understand the two, it, you cannot marry the two. Mm. What, what we, as I said, what we currently have, as is, <laughs> And for most terms and purposes, it's nothing more than a nice little window dressing. I'm actually, one of the best ones I've come across is when I was talking to um, a gentleman who works in a senior, as a senior manager in a, an Islamic bank, and he told me uh, um, the profit rate is uh, 6%. I said, you mean the interest rate? He goes, no, no, profit rate. Ooh, so now it's no longer interest. So we just magically removed the, what you call the word interest, and it's no longer interest. But this is how people perceive it. 
Another issue which uh, I came to this country uh, uh, 24 years ago and I've been very happy here. Uh, I've lived 15 of the last 24 years uh, in Dubai, but I have had an unbroken residence visa for 24 years now. But this morning I had to submit my passport to renew my visa yet another time for three years. People like, and there are about 80% of the people in this room are in exactly that position. You are in a position of power and influence. <laughs> what Excuse shouldn't, me? well, uh, influence, that's like well, you, you, you make a lot of noise, so you know, you can get it, the voice out there. But shouldn't this at some point change? Because, and, and I know you're on record that let, you sort of let, say that. Let, let's put it this way. From a business aspect, that makes sense. Okay? Yeah. But from a political aspect, it might not make sense. As I'm not the person who is going to make the judgment along those lines, and I'm not the one who I, 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 I might live with it if someone else makes the judgment, I cannot answer that question. I'm not trying to defer from it. I just am not the right person to answer the question. It's the same when, when people ask me, how many cigars do you smoke? And I've tried to explain, unlike a cigarette which has a defined size, cigars come in different sizes. So if, you tell, if I smoke a Churchill, which is this big, or a Pantella, which is this small, this, I can drink, th uh, smoke 13 or 14 of them and will be equal to one of a Churchill. But I'm not trying to say I don't, I, I'm, how many I'm cigar, I'm not trying to hide how many cigars I smoke. It's just, mm -hmm. I can't define it for you. It's the same thing in this, in this case. I cannot be the person to, def I know it's an issue, I know it's something that bothers a lot of people here. And I know it also helps a lot of people not invest in this part of the world. I, I know that the because- The speed at which this country is going and people like us and a lot of people here are driving within that. I mean, that's, you know, to qualify it's, good people versus not so good people, it, find it's, a way. It's, it's an issue that a, a government body has to properly do a study, understand, and I know usually when people say study means kill the idea, but no. <laughs> but do, it's really do a proper study as to what are the benefits of changing the law versus what are the benefits of keeping it as is. Not just for a specific people, but for the overall benefit of the country. If my case, so my consideration is purely financial, then there's a certain way I should direct things. If it is security-wise, I should direct on certain things. If it's, um, if it's um, um, what do you call it, um, demographics, I should move it in a certain, it has to be something where all of these and, and other factors are touched upon. I am not in that position. Fair enough. Uh, you said in one of your quotes that uh, the Arab world has two ills, um, extremism and nationalism. And one of the greatest beneficiaries of that is Dubai. And, it's, and if anything goes wrong with those two things, extremism and nationalism, Dubai suffers. No, oh, Dubai benefits. The, sorry, Dubai benefits. Yes. I mean, they need to, uh, as long as it's there, Dubai benefits. And if it, is, it isn't there, then Dubai suffers. Uh, any thoughts on that? Any comments? I mean, is, is this, uh, or is this a statement? I don't know how to comment more on that. I think it's, it's quite obvious. Because um, I was, I was look, linking it to look, the Arab Spring. Uh, because, okay, yeah, look at yeah. all of what has happened in the Arab Spring. Uh, <laughs> spring. Okay. Um, people are talking about these little issues, in some cases very painfully serious issues, that are happening in those countries. Uh, we have a saying in Arabic, mawtun uh, lek farajun li. Your death is my reprieve. Other people are suffering. People here are benefiting. The money, money is, is a coward. It will not stay where it's needed. It will move to where it benefits the most. Fortunately, this part of the world is smart enough to understand, I'm going to help you find a home. Now, superficially, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not my responsibility if country X decides to be nasty with its own people. But if I can save people who've worked really hard to, to get that money, and unfortunately there will also be other people who worked really well, less hard, and they got that money. I'm not going to filter the two, because I will then have to end up being the moral judge. And really, what's my position to do that? Why should I do that? But I will say, I open up the market, allow you to come in here, 
and utilize your money. And when you utilize your money, people benefit. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Absolutely. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is everybody doing okay? You're, uh, because we've done about 35, 40 minutes now. And uh, if with your permission and your indulgence, we'll do another 10 minutes. Uh, we'll talk about some of uh, Michelle's sort of more personal side. And, as we, and then we'll move into uh, some Q&A. Okay? Are we okay with that? Otherwise, I can fast track it. We're okay. Michel has been very kind because he said that his two-year-old daughter is, is fast asleep, so he's given us the luxury of extra time in yes, case we uh, need it. Yes, so uh, thank you for I, that. I don't want, she, my, my daughter just discovered, my two-year-old just discovered lungs and how much voice and volume she can produce out of the thing. So <laughs> the more I stay here, the, you know, the less, like, less chance I'll have to listen to it. <laughs> Before we go on to, your, on, on, on to some of your personal issues, well, maybe I won't go into your personal <laughs> issues. <laughs> uh, Let's talk entrepreneurship um, and uh, the small medium enterprises that are there in this region. Um, are we supporting this, the SMEs in our country and in our region? Categorically, no. What specific, what specific two or three things do we need to do to actually do that? Uh, Most people that? have the impression that for SMEs, you, what you need is finance. That's a factor. This is not a small factor. But the problem is, monies can be attained. You can collect monies through your friends, family. They might not end up being your friends. The families, you're still stuck with them, but they might not end up having those friends after that. But you can still attain cash. But what you can't attain is education, support, mentoring, people to help you move. You can't get that. And the worst part is we talk a beautiful game. We support SMEs. Really? Show me where you've done it. And it's not, it's not the you here is a general you. It's not meant to anyone. But we don't do that. We will tell the SME, you know what, um, go to this bank and create this. But here's the thing. Let's assume I go out and I actually collect the money. And now I start my new business. And Big company X comes in and says, hmm, that's an interesting business they're in. I'm going to set up a competitor. And I'm going to milk them to death. Because I can afford to, to continuously lose money while they can't. Yes. And I'll take their business whether they like it or not. Where's the protection? There needs to be some sort of protection, for God's sakes. We but, protect, by the way. But the family, larger families, don't they just squeeze things? Not, uh, it's not just larger families, yeah. even public listed. Public for the listed love of yeah. God. I mean, yeah. the worst offenders I've come across. <laughs> uh, right. Businesses who believe themselves to be large and dominant yeah. will do that. They will look and say, you know what? I want to be in that space. Somebody else has created that, yeah. but I want that. Yeah. Now, the whole purpose of creating SMEs is you want these small SMEs to breathe because the more they breathe, the better the economy shape becomes. And the second, and it's significant, not only do I need what you call it, um, venture capital structures, I need laws, impl uh, applicable laws, and I need someone to actually make sure that these laws are implemented. It's you. We have some beautiful laws here. You can open up some, uh, the law books and they're fantastic. Come to implement them. You do not, the last thing you want to do is go to court. I assure you. The judge woke up that day. He was in a really good mood. You won. <laughs> His wife smacked him on the head that night. You're going to lose. Uh, you don't want to go in that Russian rule. Uh, well, sorry, that, that game of chance. You don't want that. I want to be able to say, you know what, one of the things why you have entrepreneurial spirit in other countries is because you have government protection for these things. We don't have them. I'm not saying that the government should take a slice of this business, but I'm saying the government should at least keep put the, the grounds and make the grounds available so that these <coughs> companies can breathe. I also need, and this is important, when you reach, not the small size, but when you reach the medium size, 
I need to have a venue to be able to create more wealth, not for me, but for others. And that wealth comes through going public. If you look at the way that the thing is structured so far, it is so restrictive that if I am producing, um, in other countries you have two, you have the two tier what you call public listed companies. You have the um, um, Fortune 500 type of companies up there, the large ones. And then you have, uh, in the UK it's called AIM. NASDAQ uh, and AIM. Yeah. NASDAQ used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot it, of big it's ones, it's yeah. uh, the American uh, stock exchange. I don't, I don't know if it still exists or not. But you have a secondary, what you call it, market. I need to have that available. I need to make that exist for people who are producing f um, the turnovers of uh, 50, 20 million, 20, 50, 100 million. Now, you might think that's a huge amount, but literally, if you translate different currencies, it's really small. I mean, 100 million dirhams is about 18 million pounds. That's a really small company. Eight million. Eighteen. Eighteen. Sixteen. Fine. Whatever. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you, no. need, you need to be able to grow that type of business. But how can you do that if you don't have the, the groundwork to be able to help yeah. it? And, and one other category, and this is a very important category. SMEs grow on the backs of two things. Available finance. So it's important, as I said, it's an important factor. But the second thing, young boys and girls, and they need an education. What do we offer them? Do we offer them proper universities here? This is important. Now, I, I'm not trying to be negative towards universities that exist over here. But unfortunately, as far as I'm concerned, most universities in this part of the world are for profit. And if it's a for-profit organization, that's what you're going to end up having. So when we look at Silicon Valley and their success in terms of innovation and entrepreneurship, is, it, is that ecosystem the ideal ecosystem that we should be adopting? As a concept, yes. Uh, not necessarily in the IT sector. That's a, that's a different case altogether. But the idea is, again, I need to help. I need to first get proper, educated, young boys and girls. Then I need to infuse their minds with ability to think. And this is a thing that I don't, again, I'm not going to talk about the, uh, the Indian subcontinent because I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if that's the case or not. I can tell you, at least in the American system and at least in the Arab system, uh, most, again, uh, there are always exceptions. The Arab system, uh, sorry, the American system tells you, um, I think you raw from high school, you, and believe me, they're incredibly raw. And I train you on a specialized thing until you, when you reach, you know that aspect really well. And then you grow. You test, you try, you experiment, you see what it's like, and you grow. In the Arab world, unfortunately, unfortunately, my job, if I wanted to get out of university with a degree, is to be the best parrot possible. As my teacher tells me, I regurgitate. Now, where's the mind growth going to come from? It's slowly changing in some countries where we're trying to see, I want new ideas. Again, that's why I'm saying I don't know enough about the Indian subcontinent to be able to say well, which one of these two categories it fits in. It could be, it could be both. It could be something that's here and something that's there. I don't know. But the idea is if you don't help that mind grow, if you don't help that child understand that thou, my concepts and ideas are, had worked for me, but will not necessarily work 10 years down the road, five years down the road. So you need to create new things and new ideas. That's the first category. The second one is, again, getting the finance. And the third is creating, and I'm very cautious about saying this, I hate legislation of anything. Because I know it starts with good intention, but it usually finds ways of creating more jobs for bureaucrats. But you need to be able to help in a wider, the government needs to help on a wider scale in allowing facilities to happen or to exist. And one of the final questions in this segment is, uh, what do you think is the biggest challenge, the biggest 
difficulty that the Arab world in general is facing? What one thing that would change? Uh, or right. that is that, you know, keeps you up at night and say, oh, God, See, the, this the, thing the, is going to continue, the, then the, we, are, we are hitting a the, brick The wall. problem with that question is you're assuming the Arab world is homogenous. No, it's I'm not, not assuming that. I'm not assuming no, that but, at all. Because when you say, that, what's the one problem? Because the problem in, in North Africa is different than the problem in the Levant, is different than the problem in Mesopotamia, it's different problem in the Arabian was, Peninsula. And even within the Arabian Peninsula, going from Kuwait to Yemen, it's completely different. I will challenge you on that. Okay. A single, united.